229 gallons of milk, 366 gallons of gas, and 825 divided by 2.054 times 10 to the 15th power is about 4.0165 times 10 to the negative 11th power percent of the United States GDP. Hello. This is just a microphone. Hello everyone and welcome to 2021. My name is Michael. I've never done an intro like that in my life. I felt horrible that whole time. Today we're doing something the same as always, but we're spicing it up a little bit because it's 2021 and I'm being efficient Michael. So I'm breaking this video up into four parts and we're gonna go every over, uh, going horribly. This video, like I said, is broken up into four different parts. Fit, quick detail overview, efficient, remember? Why it costs $825, which you could buy a leather jacket for, and a pretty nice leather jacket, or, you know, other things like rent and food. And then finally, it may be unexpected, but why I'm selling it and why I love it, but I also don't like it at all. Also, if you're interested in buying it right off my back, just stick around. It is a pure blue Japan raw denim jacket, Samurai's collaboration with Okayama Denim with a Hank dyed 12 dip warp on the outside and an eight dip weft on the inside. And it's a very expensive denim jacket. Okay, so the- Oh no, I did preacher hands again. Hate when I do that. Reminds me of those guys on YouTube trying to sell you something. I just want to go over fit because I always forget to talk about fit. People are like, great video. Where is the fit? So I can break, I think you can break denim jackets up into three main categories in terms of fit because I think everything is based off of these three things. One is hair. Honestly, no idea what I was trying to get across here. The jacket fits me okay. It looks like it fits me well, but it's a little tight in the back. If I try to do a hug, it feels like really tight. I'm 5'9", 160 pounds. I've never done this before, but this is an edit to my edit. I'm 150 pounds. <laughs> this is a size three. I could have gone to a size four. Okay, here we go. That part of the video was very efficient. It was a very efficient fit breakdown and it is so efficient that now I'm wearing two watches. Step two, quick details. This is basically what I would say if you were standing next to me in a store and we were looking at the jacket. I'd be like, oh, did you notice that jacket on the side? Also, if you like this video, you should subscribe, like, comment, do a little dance, make a little love. Iron buttons coated with black paint or copper buttons or anything like that. So as you bump into things and you wear things, the color under it is revealed. Usually it's an orange. I get super excited. I'm like, wow, look at that. I'm damaging my jacket. Okay, so that's that. Also, natural indigo. We'll get into the indigo in a little bit, but really now the most efficient way of dyeing denim is through synthetic indigo. This is natural indigo, so from the indigo ferro plant, which also, there is another plant called woad, which has indigo dye in it, and in Europe was really popular to dye things blue for a while. That kind of faded out, but I wanna get a woad dye jacket, and I'm saying woad, not like, let's drive on the woad today, but woad as in this plant, beautiful. Now, on Okayama, De oh, I have to say this, there's going to be some shots of the factory where this jacket was made, those are from Okayama Denim, the company. They are not mine, they provided them for me, and you can tell because I would have held the camera like this, and they held it like that. So anyways, Okayama Denim says that the pockets are reinforced by rivets, the booby pockets, I assume. Actually, is that what I'm missing? I don't think I'm missing it, but they say the booby pockets are reinforced by rivets. I don't see rivets in the pockets at all. I don't see rivets, maybe they're hidden, but usually I can find them. I can sniff them out because you can see the backside of the rivet on the inside of the jacket. Everything's bar tacked too, which is an alternative to rivets. So I don't know, I don't see it. But there is, it looks like a reinforcement on the back collar of the jacket. I don't know if that's just how the jacket is made or what it really is, but you'll see a little shape like this right below the collar. It doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe it reinforces the shape of the collar, makes it easier to pop or something like that, but that's there. Maybe it's just full of rivets. And then on the side of the jacket, which was when I got my first Pure Blue Japan jacket, basically the only reason I got it, not because it's not great, but I was just like, oh, that's awesome. There's a little indigo leaf on the side, which I wish it was a woad leaf because all woad lead to heaven. Now, this part of the jacket, this is where Pure Blue Japan shines, obviously, because it's the denim but this is a masterpiece of denim. This is the first time ever, people usually say like, oh, it's so slubby, I could see it looks like rain, but I'm usually like, okay, have you seen rain? But this time, it actually does look like rain. I usually say, you know, there's a little bit of slub or a lot of slub, this is all slub. And slub is when there's different sized threads on the same weave, so it adds this like thicker looking thread by a thin one, and since the outside warp is darker than the inside weft, it really does look like 
wispy like little raindrops on the jacket when you look down so and this is i i always say this jacket got a lot of compliments and stuff like that but this jacket is also getting a lot of compliments but it's a different kind of compliment people aren't like oh nice jacket people are like whoa, whoa can i see that and then i tell them the cost and they're like oh michael are you daft away you three inch fool thou cream faced loon those are shakespeare insults i love shakespeare insults because i don't know if they were incredible when shakespeare wrote them or if they were common just like disses but now, they hit extra hard. A cream-faced loon. Another one I saw was, you're as fat as butter. Finally, the best part of this jacket, the supple, voluptuous, easy to slip into hand pockets. This jacket has hand pockets. And recently, the, I've noticed on videos where I'm like, oh, this jacket's great, but it sucks because it doesn't have hand pockets. There are some people that are taking great offense to that. Person commented, maybe if you weren't such a wimpy man, you wouldn't need hand pockets on your jacket. And I was like, Listen, you stick of butter. But the best one so far was, ever heard of gloves, Jack? The big question, the third point, why does it cost $825? So right off the bat, Okayama Denim basically says it right away. This is Hank died by aging craftsmen. I don't know why they always say aging, like they're old. Like Oni, for example, is like, our denim is woven by one master and he's old. Well, people only get old for so long. What if he- Long story short, this jacket is so expensive because it was made by a bunch of old people and they did it very slowly. Just kidding. The real truth is that they say aging craftsmen because there's a, a lot more pride in Japan for the elderly mastering their craft and their shokunin, which is Japanese for craftsmen. But it's more like this ideology that there is no such thing as like perfecting your craft, but they're always chasing this like unattainable tip of a mountain to perfect their craft. So they're older because they've been working on it for so long and they perfected all these methods and stuff like that with it. That's why they say aging. We'll get into Hank dying and stuff like that. Again, like I said before, Pure Blue Japan are basically the top tier. They are the masters of weaving denim and making these crazy kakishibu wefts, uh, indigo warps and purple face jackets, which I wanted one of those jackets for so bad. I messaged Pure Blue Japan like six times. I was like, hey, is there any chance you're gonna do the purple face jackets again? Any thoughts on the purple face jackets? Hey, how about the purple face jacket? Nothing. I even asked my question, put it into a Japanese translator, and sent it in Japanese, thinking maybe it's just because they can't understand what I'm saying. But no. Okay, so the, I think there's three main ways to dye denim. Vat dyeing, which is the cheapest, which is what it sounds like, just in a vat. Then there is rope dyeing, where the threads are twisted really tight and then dipped into indigo, and then Hank dying. Rope dying is the one we'll talk about really quick. The draw there is the fact that it's, you know, coiled very tightly, so when it's dipped and pulled out very quickly, the outside is dyed in indigo, the inside is white still, or whatever color it was before it was dyed. I thought originally Hank dying meant dying by hand, like literally meant that. I'm about to mispronounce the word skein, but don't worry, the magic of editing can fix that. And then I thought skein dying was what they're holding, the yarn. But I think it turns out those are just really two different forms of yarn packaging. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but basically hank dyeing or skein dyeing, whatever you want to call it, is someone by hand is holding a hank of yarn or skein of yarn in an indigo vat and they themselves are putting it into the indigo, moving it around, agitating it, pulling it out, rinsing it off, letting it dry to that light blue color, doing it again and again and again till it gets dark. This is a really intensive process and takes a long time. So someone's, you know, wiggling their little tootsies in it. So that's a really big draw, but also why I'm selling the jacket. And we'll get into that more at the end of the video, but. So the aging ancient old craftsmen loosen up their joints and they wiggle it in indigo and then, you know, they dry it, they rinse it, whatever. And this is where you get into the really cool part of the jacket. There was literally someone looking at the threads being like, okay, this is dyed enough. Okay, I'll put this here. It'll get spun out, rinsed and washed like that. That is so cool to think about. Someone was taking that much time and care and attention to the fabric of your jacket. Then it gets more insane because that sounds like it'll be the really labor intensive part, but then the aging old decrepit craftsman walks over to the loom and by hand, actually not the loom, the machine before the loom that feeds things into the shuttle loom, by hand, each thread they put on the machine and not even just kind of like, oh, one thread, two thread, three thread, they are strategically laid out 
to give you that slub, you know, different thread sizes and everything like that. And just so you can kind of appreciate how much work that is, the selvage line, that white line with the blue running through it, that is 16 individual threads. Also, I really feel like I'm gonna make someone angry when I'm saying old, decrepit craftsmen. That's not true, they're very spry, they're masters at their crafts. So then, not even to make the entire jacket, but just to actually loom the fabric or weave the fabric, just to actually put the fabric on the shuttle womb. Womb, oh. Woad. When they're weaving the fabric, there are 2,000 to 5,000 threads placed on the machine before the shuttle loom by hand, and then it's woven into denim. So those two things right there, besides of course the extreme attention to detail in every single facet of this jacket, are why it costs that much. Basically, it takes a very long time to do, is very intensive, it requires specialized help to do it, the masters of the crafts, the shokunin, and that's why it costs that much. And that's also why it looks like that. It, Like I said, it's a masterpiece of a jacket. And I don't mean masterpiece like, oh, it's a cool jacket. I mean, it is literally art. Okay, so after that spiel, why am I selling it, you may ask? You may say, why are you selling that? There's a few reasons. I'll put them in order and we'll go from there. First things first, with any clothes, no matter how much of a masterpiece it is or anything like that, has to fit right and it doesn't fit me right so you ever buy something really nice online and then you get it and you open it up and you look at it and you're like that looks a little small and then you put it on and you're like mm, that is small huh okay the other reason is because it's hank dyed which kind of unravels the entire point why did you buy this jacket why would it but the combination of it being hank dyed and not fitting me properly is a combination obviously that i don't really want it fits me close it fits me close to really good and I bet if I wore it after a while it would fit me even a little bit better but if it fits me all right then I'll usually give it a pass because part of the fun for me on a denim jacket or raw denim jeans or anything like that is the fact that denim fades and gets all this cool different shades and hues and stuff of that of blue but hank dyed like I said before when denim is rope dyed the core of it is white hank dyed is blue all the way through so these jackets basically don't fade. And if they fade, it's extremely slow, extremely uniform. And for me, I was ready for that. I thought that would be really cool. It does fade, obviously, but very, very, very slow. This guy, that is 400 wears in, and it looks like it was never worn. So that kind of takes away a lot of the fun for me. That's like if someone gave me a sports car, and then once I got in the sports car, they said, Hey, this doesn't go over 40. I'd be like, whoa. Finally, finally, I put this last. It's actually closer to number one, but it's $825. And I, there's a lot of things I can do with $825, like get more stuff for the Iron Snail. So it's gotta go. If you wanna buy it, you can DM me on Instagram. I also usually post these videos on Reddit. So if you saw this on Reddit, just you know, message me on Reddit and uh, I'll just mail it to you through the internet. Well, through the mail. Anyways, that's about it. I will see you every Friday at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Friday. Every one of them. I promise.